Hello and welcome to Ham Radio Comms. I'm your host Edgar and today we're going to talk about HT antennas, specifically aftermarket ones. And these are for amateur radio handhelds. And also these will fit on, um, on the Yaesu FT817 and 818. So some of these I actually use for that radio since they're BNC. Uh, before I forget, please like and subscribe, hit that little bell notification. It really helps me out a lot on bringing these informative videos to you. So let's get right into it. All right, first thing, let's get uh, let's talk about the stock HT antenna like we see here on my Yaesu FT70D. Um, I've heard people call these a dummy load, throw it in your drawer, throw it away, and, and buy something else, get a proper antenna. That's not true. I just want to tell you that the regular stock antenna that they sell is tuned from the factory. It's rugged. It's reliable. Uh, it gets the job done. You know, you'll, you'll be able to do the normal walkie-talkie ranges of a couple of miles on flat land, uh, even further on open water. Uh, of course, you have elevation. You can hit local repeaters or any repeater that's really up high as well. You can never estimate the range of... Uh, how far you can hit a repeater until you try because there's differences in um, the gain of the antennas on the repeater, how high the antenna is on a tower, how high that tower is in elevation on a mountain. So you can have a 7,000 foot mountain and you're on a 3,000 foot mountain, you know, 40 miles away. And I guarantee you, you're going to hit it with this, with this antenna. So they're not useless like people say. So it's a great antenna. Um, but there are better alternatives for specific purposes, and that's what I'm going to show you today. I'm going to give you a lot of alternatives. Depends on what you want to do, and you probably will see a, um, a jump up in performance on those. But of course, the downside is you're going to have a bigger antenna and so forth. But it's nice to have those options, but definitely don't get rid of your stock antenna. It does have its purpose. <clears throat> uh, most of the Japanese radio HCs these days, it's coming with uh, SMA connectors. Um, which will look like here. This is pretty typical, just like that. You got the uh, the female connector there, and then the male connector is what's on the other end. Has that little pin pin inside. Um, most of the stock antennas, the gain is going to be about two or three dB below an isotropic or a quarter wave vertical, for instance. Uh, so what happens is on a stock antenna because of its size it's going to be down on your wattage. So if you're putting out uh, five watts on this radio, going through your stock antenna, you're going to be putting out two or three watts, depending on the band. You're going to get uh, two watts out of uh, two and a half watts, something like that, out of uh, two meters. And on the uh, 70 centimeter band or 440 band, you're going to get um, a little better, around three watts or so, um, because um, you are some dB downs on this just because of the sheer size, not because of the quality. So when you jump up to something like this, which is a pretty much a full wave, two meter vertical, just like you'd find on your mobile radio. If you notice the radiating element on the roof of your car, if you have a two meter vertical, that's a quarter wave. It's gonna be about this size. So this is unity gain. So the advertised wattage on these radios, five watts, for instance, is gonna put out the full five watts into something like this. You know, minus the SWR, if it gets high at either end of the band or something, then it's gonna drop a little from that. But that's pretty typical on any of these uh, long antennas here. You're gonna get unity gain, which means no gain at all. It's gonna be uh, what your wattage rating is. Um, so the first one we're gonna take a look at will be this MFJ right here. Uh, these are, you know, pretty decent priced. All of these are going to be in the twenty to thirty dollar range, closer to twenty five, up to up to over thirty, like this diamond over here, because um, there's a lot going in, on with that antenna. <clears throat> um, but these antennas are great. This will definitely increase your range, and all you do is just screw it on. It's like one of the easiest upgrades. And there you go. As you can see, if you're walking around the mall with this or something like that, it wouldn't be very um, uh, discreet. So this is good for applications where you really want to reach out and it will extend your range. So all the ranges that I mentioned on this antenna here, um, you're going to get better receive and better power out. So this will give you close to the five. And then most of these antennas like this one here, 440, since the wavelength is smaller, you're going to get more gain. So most of these are going to be over two dB of gain on the 440 band. Uh, so like 2.15, I think that would be um, what the DB technical thing is, but you're not going to really get exactly that. 
Um, but that means that your 5 watt 440 out on this antenna is going to be closer to like 7 watts or something, maybe 8 watts, 7 or 8 watts. So it's a really uh, nice upgrade. Um, and the same thing with these other ones here. We're going to go through each one. But before I do, let's talk about adapters. Because this takes a long time to screw this on and off. You swap the model out, what some people do, is they will get an adapter like this, SMA to BNC. Some radios do have BNC. You might already have BNC antennas and you want to standardize. So you could just permanent, not almost semi-permanently, just mount that on your radio. And then it's, th it's this easy just to click it on and you're done. So that's a, a pretty nice thing. So what a lot of people do is all the radios are BNC or adapters and they just buy all BNC uh, antennas uh, for the quick change. But you don't have to do that. You could just order an SMA if that's what you're, you're looking to do. <clears throat> uh, so let's go through each one. I actually have some paperwork on each one. So first let's talk about the one right here, the MFJ1717S. S stands for SMA. If it's just the 1717, then that's the BNC. And for all you Waxon radio owners, uh, they can't be normal like everybody else. So they reverse the polarity or, of their SMA. So instead of having, um, instead of having the female here, it's actually a male and the female is on the antenna. So you got to order right antenna. This one actually comes with the, um, the reverse polarity one. So that instead of the male, this will be the female. And that would be called the 1717SF or Sierra Frank, Sierra Foxtrot. All right. So that's available in all three versions there. All right. So that's the adapter. Let's talk about adapters since I have it in my hand. Here's another one on this little dinky. We're going to talk about this antenna. But this one has an adapter too that's black, which kind of color wise fits really nicely like that. Uh, and these also bottom out on the radio. So this way it makes them very rugged and strong and the stress isn't on the connector itself, which makes it really nice. And again, you could just, you know, pop these on here. The one like this one here, that's, uh, that's BNC. So that looks pretty good. So that's the adapter. So make sure you get a good quality adapter like these two I showed you here. These two, there's no markings on them, but I think they're good ones. Like Comet makes them. I forgot who makes this one. The one not to get would be this one here. This is also the same thing on SMA, BNC, but this is more for attaching cables. If you want to uh, make those two cables together, that'd be for that. Because when you put these on the radio, it becomes a flimsy affair and you're just asking to have something snap off. So I don't recommend that one. So get something like these, you're going to be good to go if you need to do uh, something like that. All right, let's go and look at the other antennas. So all these antennas are going to have uh, 2BD uh, of gain on the 440 band and uh, no gain on 2. Um, let's look at this diamond one next. And this one's rugged and reliable. See how it flexes? You got some flex in that cable, very strong. I've been using this for years and years. There's like no wear on it and uh, performs very well. I am able to reach much farther on repeaters and everything else with that antenna. Uh, the next one we're going to look at is the Comet, oops, Comet CH75. Same thing, works almost exactly the same. This one is happens to be BNC, where this one was the SMA. And I actually have the packaging that that one came in, and you can see the specs on it. So here we have CH75. There's the 146-440 transmit handy antenna. 3 dB a gain, and that is for the, uh, the 70 centimeter band, the 440 band. So you got like 3 dB, so that's going to up your power in 440. This is a 20 watt. Most of them are like 6 watts or 10. This one actually is a 20 watt. So conceivably, if you have a, um, a mobile type radio or something, this would actually work if you had the power turned down or something like that. Uh, most of these are also wideband received. So you can pick up FM radio and the weather and all the way up to the 800 megahertz band for public service, fire, police, and, and other uh, things like that that you're going to listen to. And as you can see right here, there's the 118, and the 160. 118 is the beginning of the aircraft band, so it picks up that as well. And this is pretty typical if you see the frequencies there on the wideband receive on most of these longer antennas. So that's the CH75, highly recommend that one uh, as well as the MFJ. All right, the next we have is a smaller antenna. 
I got one more large one to show you in a minute. So this one is the uh, Diamond SRH519. This is a smaller one. This one is really uh, not too much bigger than the stock antenna. And what this one does, it's a little bit lighter. You could bend this in a small space if you want to leave it attached to the radio. Uh, but also this is wide band receive. It's going to be a lot better than the stock one. They made sure that they put that in there as well. And let's look at the specs on, on that one. So here we have the SRH519. There's the two bands. There's the wide band frequencies right there, just like the other ones. This is a 10 watt max. And that one is the SRH519. The other one we'll look at is a one I really like, and I have this on my A17 a lot because um, this one is BNC. So this one just attaches to the front. I put a right angle BNC adapter so I can have my 817 on the bench or 818 and just have that vertical on the radio. It works really well. This one's not going to do you um, any better than the, um, than the stock antenna, but it does have wide re band receive. The FM radio and aircraft comes in really well with this, with this antenna. I have the, and this is rubber and it bends a little bit. Very rugged. If you want to be really discreet, what I use this for also is, let's say you have the adapter on it for SMA. I put it on my SMA radio here. And so I could walk around the mall with this and listen to mall security, local repeaters. I could put a, a really thin battery in it, on it, including my VX right here. All these fit on here as well, my VX8. Um, but this is a really good antenna for its size. So that's going to do really well. And I actually have the packaging for that. Let's see what we got. So there it is. And the price was around $22 at the time I bought it. Six watts. There's the two bands. There's the uh, wide band receive, as you can see there. It listed only 20 grams, so it weighs, uh, you know, two thirds of an ounce thereabouts. All right, so that's that one. Again, the gain's gonna be a little bit less than Unity on that, on that one. Love that antenna, I use that one a lot. Now even smaller is this little guy right here. This is like the wonder antenna, they call it, I think. The Diamond RH3. 144, 430, and 1200 megahertz transmit. So if you have a handy talkie that transmits in the 1.2 gigahertz range, this will be safe to transmit it as well. And obviously from its side, size, I mean, uh, you're not going to be transmitting far. This is awesome for mall security, racetracks for listening and transmitting to let's say that you have a handy talkie and you have a, a dongle or a hotspot in your house that you're transmitting through or you're doing um, crossband repeat or something you're in your yard or down the street so this is perfect for your little uh, handy talk you might have in your belt uh, you don't need to transmit far or some people transmit in their house just to get to their hotspot this is perfect for that you don't need a big antenna um, you, just, you want to throw it in your shirt pocket or something and the same thing on this one here, if we um, have the adapter already on here, for instance. So if you keep that adapter and you just want to swap the big one for little ones like this, it just takes two seconds to put that on and it's really small like that. And I don't have the uh, paperwork on that one. All right, just want to mention this one right here. Look at this stock antenna. Not all stock antennas are small. This is for the VX8. So this is going to do way better. It's not going to be 2 and 3 dB down. I don't know what it is, but it's going to be much better. Uh, and this tip comes off because that's a 220. Uh, this radio right here is a quad band, actually. It's 6 meters, 2 meter, 440, or 70 centimeters. And it's the 220 megahertz band as well. <clears throat> Uh, and that's what this antenna that's on there now. But this one isn't that bad for a stock antenna. But still, this one's better. So I upgraded to this one here. This one's kind of marketed to this radio, but it works on other radios uh, as well. It's SMA. Uh, and it is 220, 440, and 144 megahertz. It doesn't have the 6 meter. That would entail a much longer antenna. And I don't transmit on that band anyway. But this one's wideband receive also, SMA. Uh, and this one doesn't move around too much. You'll see in the next antenna I'm going to show you that it's a problem that this thing waves all the time. So, but this one goes right back. See, it waves a little bit. So when you're walking around or moving, it's not going to affect your transmission quality or receive that, that much. 
I do recommend this antenna. A lot of people love this antenna. It's a high performance and it has more gain than usual on these others. I think they're because of the um, coil that's in here and the coil that's in here, it's effectively more than one antenna put together to get more gain. So let's get the paperwork on that one we have right here. I mean the um, paperwork on the packaging. There's all the info, two meter, one and one fourth meters is a 220 band and there's 440. So it's a tri-band antenna. The gain is 2.15 dB on 70 centimeters. So I guess it is the same as the others. You got a 2 dB of gain on 440. 10 watts and six band receive coverage. So I guess that trap is there just for uh, to accommodate three bands. There you go. So that one's highly recommended as well. And it also work on, uh, you don't need a 220 band, it'll still work on two meter 440 if you happen to have that antenna. Um, the next antenna I wanna show you is, uh, that's in this little travel pack. Um, this travel pack can hold my FT70 and a bunch of accessories. I just grab this and go, and then I can get on the air and stay on the air for quite a while with what's in the pack. So let me show you this. I got this cheap at Walmart. It's meant for cameras. And it's a little bit waterproof, water resistant. So normally the radio would go in there like that. And I have a speaker mic here. By the way, when I have these long antennas, I often speak with a speaker mic just to keep that radiating power that's more powerful away from my head a little bit, but not necessary, but they're great to have a speaker mic. And then behind here, I have an awesome antenna. So what I can do is I can fit my, my stock antenna in here, and I could also fit like something like this in here in these little loops here. But also I've got a full quarter length antenna that fits in here. And this is a, I use this all the time. This is a really nice common antenna um, and it's really bendable. They, they use this, the material that is used on this is the same material that they have in those unbreakable uh, eyeglasses. So really rugged, um, this thing has got a, a little base here that's SMA. I think this comes in BNC as well. Um, but really nice because I can fit it in here and then if, when I get to my destination, I've got much more range out of that. The only downside to this that I can see uh, is that, let me get rid of this uh, adapter. Uh, the only downside is that it waves around too much. So it doesn't work. I thought I was gonna use this when I take a walk or something, but it doesn't work when you walk. Because you walk, it goes like this. And that's causing like uh, Doppler fields. The frequency is like going nuts because of Doppler back and forth and they're gonna hear choppy uh, transmissions from you. And you can see, here I'm gonna stop moving my hand, I'll wave it once, it takes a long time to stop. So any movement and that thing's going wild. Uh, but if you're using a speaker or microphone, you set it on a table or something or hold on to it and don't move, then it's not an issue. Uh, but just be aware of that. Um, if you wanna walk or something, it's not gonna work. Uh, these other antennas don't do that as much like this one here. You know, it really doesn't go crazy uh, The other this 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 is a stiffer wire and it just stops right away So anyway, that's the downside of the SMA and let me show you the specs on that uh, before I forget Here we go. So this is the one I just showed you the SMA 24 There's the bands And uh, there's the gain so this one, they're actually showing more gain. I don't know how they're doing that, but they're showing more gain on both um, 2.15 for two meters maybe and 3.14 DBI for 440. That would be amazing. I don't know how they're doing it. So that's, that's their claimed, um, that's their claimed gain. 20 watts, most people won't need that. And it's a wide band as well. It doesn't say it on here, but I looked it up and this one is a uh, white band as well. All right, and then also in this little travel pack, um, so I have all those antennas in here and then behind here, there is room for a spare battery. This is for my VX8 actually, just wanted to show you, you could fit a battery in there. And over here, you can actually fit an AC adapter. So really nice thing to anything like this, just to grab and go and you got a full kit for your HTs. See if I forgot anything. No, I think that I, that's about it. So what, I love all these antennas. That's why I still have them. They all have their purpose. They all work great. And it is uh, something to augment your stock antenna. Well, thanks so much for watching. I appreciate you being here. And we'll catch you next time on Ham Radio Comms. Take care.